Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Eleanor Carruthers and I'm the Commercial Content Executive at IGB. Today's webinar will focus on cashless payment solutions, which is sponsored by digital payment provider Trustly. Trustly is revolutionising the way that players verify their identity, make deposits and receive withdrawals in land-based casinos, gaming halls and sports bet shops. Trustly's commercial manager, Sam Milton, joins us today to share a bit of background on how they're creating a new era of cashless payments. Land-based gaming begins to make a comeback. Operators are faced with the challenge of adapting at the required pace. Recent years have seen significant growth in cashless payment technology, and it is increasingly becoming a helpful tool for operators to drive efficiency and enhance the customer experience. This webinar will be recorded and you'll be able to watch it on the IGB site following today's session. So without further ado, I'll pass over to Sam. Thanks so much again, Sam, for joining us today. Cheers, thanks, Eleanor, for the, for the introduction. And uh, thank you to, to everybody joining us on the, on the webinar today again. Um, as Eleanor said, my name's Sam. Uh, I've worked in the, the payments industry for a number of years now. And I have, over the last 18 months, been lucky enough to lead, at least from a commercial perspective, uh, the development of, of Trusty's new product, Scan and Play. So what I'm gonna do in this, in this webinar is I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk you through how we've developed and, and changed a, a very popular online payment method into one that works seamlessly in a retail setting. Um, but primarily, I want to outline what that actually looks like and means to an operator using it within gaming specifically. So I'm going to go over how Scan and Play can, by leveraging bank transfer as a payment method, um, how we can help you automate your KYC process, um, improve your, your customer's overall experience in your venue from, from entry to exit, um, significantly reduce the, the variable costs of handling cash and finally um, as a result of, of all three of those things um, how you can streamline various administration and management processes especially surrounding payments kyc and responsible gaming so before i get started on, on all of that um, i want to give you a, a quick overview of, of who trustly are and what we do for those of you that don't know um, Trustly is, as of today, the, the global leader in account to account payments. So that's, that's using direct bank transfer to initiate deposits and withdrawals between you and your consumers. Um, we work with over 8,000 merchants now. Um, we've got a, a global reach of, of roughly 525 million consumers. We're connected to, to over 6,300 banks and that's spread across 30 countries worldwide. Um, 2,700 of those banks are connected in the US. We recently merged with a, with a great business called Pay With My Bank. Um, they're now known as Trustly Inc. And that helps us better serve that part of the world. Um, and we're growing. We're growing quickly. Um, as a result of, I would say, sort of the ever increasing popularity of, of alternative payment methods, coupled with um, PSD2 and open banking, which relates to Trustly's products specifically, um, we were able to, to onboard and launch with 2,500 new merchants in 2020 alone. So we've been keeping busy. So I want to give you an idea of how Scan and Play can work. Um, and in order to do that, I'm gonna run you through how one of our popular online payment methods works. Hopefully this gives you a flavor and gives you an idea for how the best bits of that product can then be implemented into a retail setting and, and benefit consumers and operators in a retail setting. So using the online product, let's, let's take an online casino, for example. The traditional route for an online casino to acquire a new player um, is for that player, that customer, to land on that casino's website and click a register button. Um, you're all familiar with that. At that point, they then have to fill out what is normally a lengthy registration form. That process alone is the biggest drop off in conversion for online casinos, and that makes sense. Um, but at the end of that process, very often players then have to validate their email address, um, and they sometimes have to provide scans of paper documentation, and they certainly would before any kind of sizable deposit or withdrawal. And that's all just to verify their identity. And all of that process 
carries a huge risk that the player simply decides that they can't be bothered or they don't have the time to finish that particular process. So suddenly that player then becomes a lost statistic and, 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 the, and the casino hasn't converted them. So we built pay and play to fix that issue and improve that process. So the bare bones of what pay and play does is it embeds the registration within the deposit. And I'll talk you through how, that, how, how we do that now. So if somebody lands on a pay and play casinos website, instead of clicking register, um, they click a button that looks something like play now, instant play, or, or sometimes play as guest is a popular one. Um, they then select the amount that they wish to deposit and they'd immediately be in the Trustly deposit flow. Now, as part of that flow, given that we are an online bank transfer payment product, the player logs into their online banking. Um, and when they do that, we're able to send the operator full KYC data on that player. And when I say full, I mean every piece of KYC data that that operator's local regulator requires for them to fully register a player. So once they've logged in, we've sent, we've sent the, the KYC data to the operator and, and that's bank verified KYC data as well. So that's one of the highest forms of verification you can have. Once, once we've sent that information, the operator can then do all of their background checks. They can check self-exclusion registries. They can check whether it's an existing player. And if it's not, they can sign that particular player up to play. If they accept the player, by the time the player is hit confirm on that payment, they'll be fully registered with the operator. There's no need for them to enter any manual details at all. Um, no registration form at all. And given the standard of the KYC data that you provide, the player doesn't then have to submit any documents or any verification before they can withdraw their funds, for example, or make a sizable deposit. They can deposit, play, withdraw freely as they wish. The operator doesn't need to ask for anything else. Um, and it's worth noting that, that all of that is instant. The deposit is instant. Um, the API call or the KYC data gets sent to the operator instantly and withdrawals are instant. So players are, are really happy with the process because they get to playing immediately and they get to receive their winnings immediately. And they haven't gone through any of the legwork of filling out any forms or providing any identification. Um, so that particular product transformed a lot of businesses um, in the online gaming landscape. But I'd even say, I'd even be confident enough to say that it transformed the landscape to a certain extent, uh, especially across the Nordics, as, as players become to expect that kind of ease of use when, when, when playing with a new website. And it was about two years ago now that we, we realized that a lot of the best bits of that pay and play product could be, it could be changed ever so slightly and brought into a retail setting with, with great effect. So, as I said, we've, we developed Scan and Play and leveraged the best bits of pay and play uh, to make it suitable for, for retail venues. So, we keep with that same theme of, of improving customer experience with, with instant deposits and payouts. And I'll explain how that positively affects player loyalty in a second. Um, it can help you improve what we like to call operational efficiencies. It can help you mitigate risk, improve your AML procedure by automating the, the KYC process with the bank verified data. Um, we can help you reduce expensive cash handling costs. Um, it helps you give control back to the player with regards to their gambling behavior with limit setting. Um, and we've done all of that to be available at every touch point that a venue currently accepts a payment, whether that be in a casino, for example, if that's you know at the cage, directly at the table, directly into a slot machine, it works across all of those all of those touch points. So, what does it look like from a, a consumer perspective? Well, well, it's a bit like this. This is the flow here. Um, the QR code that you can see on the left that's what triggers the flow and triggers the scan and play product. And it can be as flexible as you want. It can be found at any point in the casino. Um, it can be a static QR code, it could be unique to the particular machine that it's on, unique to the particular venue, it's really flexible. But for this example, let's say that it's at a cash redemption terminal or a ticket in, ticket out system. 
let's say that the player goes up to the cash redemption terminal, um, they hit deposit and they'd select Trustly. And at that point, your terminal would display this QR code. Um, the player pulls out their mobile phone, they open their camera application, they scan the QR codes. This would give them a little prompt at the top, like you can see on the left. Um, once they hit that link, it would open their mobile browser and they will be getting the, the Trustly deposit flow. So they'll be, they'll be moving through the Trustly deposit flow at that point. They enter the amount that they wish to deposit. They confirm that and, and they select the bank they wish to deposit from. And this, this list of banks is dependent on the country that the player is in. So whatever country that the player is in, it will, it will give you a list of, of local banks there. They select their bank um, and they log in using their traditional bank authentication method. So whatever authentication method that they currently use to log into their online banking app on their phone at the moment, they can use within the Trustly iframe. We support all of those. In this particular example, it's, it's a very popular method called mobile bank ID that, that's used in Sweden, sort of across the board. So that's what you can see there on the, the waiting for your approval step. Once they're in, they can see a list of their bank accounts and a list of their balances. This um, is where another one of the benefits for Trustly comes in. Players aren't limited to funds or bank accounts that they have cards attached to. Uh, the player has access to their, to their full suite of funds with this product. So what that does from an operator perspective is it removes a potential barrier to conversion, i.e. the player doesn't have enough money in, in one particular account. Anyway, moving on, they, they, select, they select the account that they want to deposit from, and it brings them to the next screen where they're just asked to reconfirm again, confirm the amount, confirm the bank account. Once they click that green button at the bottom there, the transfer is done and the phone will, will do a little jingle, it will vibrate um, and by the time they look down to the machine, the cash redemption terminal, there should be a ticket there waiting for them to take and go and play throughout the casino. And again, like I said, we, we built that to work at every touch point that your venue accepts a payment. So let's talk about a casino again, a retail casino for this example. The four main touch points there would be directly at a table um, with a croupier, um, a blackjack table, for example, where the, the croupier would issue chips upon completion of the deposit. Um, it could be with the attendant at a cage, again, who would issue chips when the deposit was complete. Or these next two are completely, they don't require human interaction. So it could be at a cash redemption terminal where the player would get a ticket like we just discussed, or it could be directly into a slot machine. So those two are really useful for arcades. So it could be directly into a slot machine where the balance would, would simply be updated. Once that deposit is completed, the player can play on, on whatever machine they've, they've chosen to use. And once they've played, and let's say they want to withdraw, all they have to do is move back to one of those touch points. Um, they'd select to withdraw, or they'd tell the croupier they want to withdraw, and they'd hand over the chips, or they'd insert their ticket to the cash redemption terminal and they'd be prompted to scan a QR code to trigger the withdrawal flow. So one of the wonderful things that, that Scan and Play also does is the mobile phone that, that the player has used will remember the account that they deposited from. And if they want to withdraw back to that same bank account, which is, is a very, very common thing, um, it's simply a one-click withdrawal. They just confirm the details that, that are on the screen, that will be shown on their, on their, their mobile, and the money is instantly sent back to that bank account and available immediately. So it's a really convenient way to get funds back to the player without any need for, for a staff member to intervene. But we also give flexibility. If a player wants to withdraw directly back to a savings account, for example, which isn't unheard of and isn't, you know, isn't illogical, um, they'd simply select that they want to pay back to a different account and they'd be prompted to move back through that original Trustly flow I showed you. Um, and when they do that, we send again, full KYC data to the operator when they log into their bank. So even if it's a, a different bank that the player is withdrawing the funds to, the operator can match the KYC data on the withdrawal with the KYC data from the deposit to be sure that it's going back to the same player to avoid AML. And it gives that flexibility to the player as well. So that sort of, in summary, is, is how we've taken the best bits of pay and play and, and built them into a, what we believe is, is a complete solution for the, for the retail market. 
thank you so much for introducing some of the background there. So I mean, it's really interesting to consider some of those different key touch points for the customs, which I know is something that we're going to be delving into a bit more later, which takes us nicely onto the topic of automating KYC. So operators face more and more demands relating to KYC compliance. How can automation help to alleviate this pressure? Absolutely. So what we do at Trustly is, is like I said, we we provide full bank verified KYC data as part of the deposit flow. Um, and as a result of doing it as part of the deposit flow, as a, as a result of embedding it in there, you get that same benefit as you do when we were discussing pay and play earlier. The player doesn't have to be interrupted to, to, to complete any of that. Um, a lot of players today will have to, to fill out a manual form if it's their first time into a casino. Um, they may have to provide documentation um, and they would certainly have to do that if they're making transactions over a certain size, withdrawals or deposit. Um, but with Scan and Play, we're able to provide that information um, in real time, in an automated fashion that improves the customer experience, lowers operational cost for the operator and also saves the operator time. They don't have to input any manual data. Um, so that's how we sort of speed up and automate the KYC process and make that really seamless. But another thing that operators are facing more pressure on recently and certainly over the last few years is responsible gaming behavior. So we go one step further than automating the KYC. What we like to do, what we're trying to do at the moment is help the operator comply with those ever increasing demands of responsible gaming. Um, and we see operators dealing with that very well in online at the moment they've got some fantastic tools to help the player manage their own behavior um, and that's things like limit setting and um, deposit limits play time limits limiting the frequency of deposits weekly monthly uh, that kind of thing but they also have the ability to to cross check and connect with local self-exclusion registries and, and you can probably imagine in the online world that's much easier to do and to check all of that in the background. But in a retail setting, you know, you've got players coming in that could, could be playing with cash and they can move around, deposit and play freely. And so operators don't have the opportunity to, to give their players those tools quite as effectively as they do in online. But with scan and play, um, obviously instant real-time deposit, two-factor authentication, bank verified KYC information that helps with the fraud aspect, we're able to pass that information to the operator. So the, oper the operator can then simultaneously, while the player is depositing, check that information against local self-exclusion registries. Um, and we, as part of the Trustly flow, can also give the player the ability to set limits for themselves via their onboarding while they're making their deposit. Just as an extra step, they can set their deposit limits, their, their frequency of deposit limits, or their play times. So what this does is it allows the operator to give, to give control back to the player um, and really help the player to manage their behavior. So what we're doing, Eleanor, is we're, we're trying to provide much more than just an account to an account payment product uh, for retail gaming. It's, it's so much more than that. We're, we're minimizing fraud, and we're mitigating risk, and, and we're also improving responsible gambling and, and responsible play by allowing players to take control of their own behavior at the start of their at the start of their journey with a particular venue. But this is what it this is what that looks like from from a bit more of a technical perspective. Um, as you can see on the left, the, the player experience is, is really straightforward. The player initiates the deposit, they move through the flow, like I mentioned, and about a second after completing that flow, um, the operator will be able to, to give the player their funds or their chips or their ticket. But in the background for the operator, it's still really simple, but there are a couple of more, there are a couple more cogs that are turning to allow us to do those, those good things with KYC. So when a player initiates a deposit and they move through the, the login stage of the flow, Trustly then gathers that, that KYC data, that verified bank KYC data, and in some instances where required, we'll supplement it with verified third party data as well. We gather that and we send that again via API call to the operator. At that point, the operator can do all of their background checks. They can check self-exclusion registries to see if the player is self-excluded. 
They can check the player's age to make sure they're of age. They can check whether the player has an existing account with the venue. They can do all of that in the background. At this point, the player is still completing the deposit. Once they've checked that, let's say that they're happy to accept that particular deposit. They can then do one of two things. They can create an account for that player, if it's a new player, using the, the, the KYC information that we've sent. They can fully register that player with their system. Or if it's an existing player, they can log that activity to that existing player's account so they can track their behavior that way as well. And so by doing things in an automated fashion this way, you're, you're able to prevent underage players extremely easily. Um, you're able to track your existing players' activity to make sure everything's well there. Um, you mitigate fraud and AML risk. Um, you aren't also subject to the risk of fake documentation or even misjudgments by staff members with regards to documentation. Um, obviously the data we provide is automated and it's bank verified, so there's no risk of that there. Um, but past that, you're able to, if you have one, log that player's activity to any existing loyalty system that you've got within your venue. And again, even past that, um, we know that a lot of retail operators now have, have, online, have an online presence as well. So what you're able to do is, is match that player's deposit with their online account. So after the casino closed, for example, if players want to go home and, and have a last few spins on the roulette table, they're able to do that with the balance that they topped up in the retail venue because you've matched those accounts with the KYC information that we've provided. Thanks, Sam. So we can clearly see some very practical benefits relating to KYC, but what about on the consumer side of things? How do cashless payments enhance the customer experience overall? Yeah, so it's a good question. And, and there's obviously all of the benefits that we that I just spoke about with regards to not having to fill out forms, um, you know, not having to to wait for for deposits. Um, but there's also a few fixes that Scan and Play makes to what we've seen as as common issues with with current land based payment products. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of those key issues now, um, and then I'll discuss how we how we solve them afterwards. But the first issue that, that we consider to be problematic is, is card payouts and, and the time that it takes for card payouts to, to, be, to be completed. Um, if we're honest, most casual players will come into a casino for the first time. And although they might bring cash with them, they probably at some point they're going to make a deposit via their card. Um, and what's a, what's a casual player chasing? Uh, they're chasing probably two things. The first one is, they're chasing that jackpot win. You know, they want that big win feeling and that instant gratification. But the second underlying thing they're chasing is probably just to leave with more money than they came in with. Um, and a payment back to card dampens both of those experiences. Because we know that a withdrawal back to a card takes two to three days at best. And in some instances can take even longer weeks in certain examples. So for the two sort of scenarios I just described for your casual player, i.e. they win big or they've just won enough for them to want to withdraw, they make their withdrawal and then suddenly the, the funds aren't available in their bank account. They don't get that instant gratification. But what's more, they're probably going to be quite concerned over the next few days when they're at home that their money isn't going to arrive. Um, did they give the cash attendant the wrong card details? Did the cash attendant put their long card number in wrong? Did they use the wrong card? Did the bank decline the transaction? Um, and they're all negative thoughts you don't want your players to have. And there's a high likelihood as well that after they have those thoughts, they're going to be calling um, your casino help desk and they're going to be calling Phil on the help desk and asking him to chase the payment. When's it going to arrive? Has the bank got it? Um, and it's just, just not a pleasant experience. The last thing you want as an operator is for a player to come into your venue, have a fantastic experience from start to finish, but then have that experience ruined over the next few days because they're, because they're really worried about um, when their money's going to arrive. And of course, from a withdrawals perspective, there's also the there's also the option of a manual bank transfer. And this very often happens for obviously withdrawals over a certain size. Depending on internal policy and internal process, these can take even a number of weeks to complete. 
Um, and it's not a nice internal process. It's time consuming, it's erroneous, and it's certainly not seamless or pleasant for the, for the customer. Um, but, but past the problems, it's better for operators to, to issue funds back to the player immediately because the funds then have the, the players then have those funds available immediately and can come back faster and play faster. Um, you know, an example, you know, if Carly wins 2000 euros on the blackjack table, um, she may cash out, but then just before she gets to the exit, she might decide to have two last spins on the roulette table that she, that she wouldn't be able to have if she didn't have the funds available in her bank immediately. And that's business that the, that the, the operator would be losing out on. What we've seen from an online perspective is that instant withdrawals really increase player loyalty. Players will go back to somewhere that they know they can get their winnings from immediately rather than somewhere that makes them wait. And what that does is it massively increases player retention and as a result, drastically increases lifetime value of players for operators, which is, you know, that's what we're trying to do here. Um, the next common issue that we see is, is high rollers having to use cash. Um, and that's because of the limits that the banks place on cards. Yes, they can call their bank, they can have their limits temporarily changed, um, but it's risky because if they do lose their card or they are subject to fraud, that's a problem. It takes time. It's not the easiest thing to do. I don't know my online, uh, sorry, I don't know my mobile banking credentials. They're different to my online ones. Um, and so what's the alternative there? That Well, the player goes to the ATM, but again, same limits apply with an ATM. So they actually end probably are likely to go to the bank and withdraw cash, but it's not convenient and it's a barrier to conversion for the operator. You know, for example, if, if Darcy is, is walking home from work and she's a regular player at a casino and she's what we would consider a high roller, she passes the casino and she fancies coming in for the evening, but it wasn't planned. She hasn't been to the bank. She doesn't have the cash on her. And so she can't play with the amounts that she's used to and she likes to play with. And that's a business that the operator has lost. Um, and that's not to mention the security risk either. Um, obviously, we know that the surrounding area of, of casinos are, are hotspots for crime. And that's because there's more cash in those areas than there is anywhere else in town. So that's a problem. And the third common issue we see is, is with international players. They really don't have much of a choice in regards to how they can how they can play, um, which often leads them to to depositing uh, sorry not depositing at all. ATMs typically have really hefty foreign exchange fees when they withdraw cash, or if they choose to make a payment directly from their card, if it's if the transaction isn't declined, which very often an international gaming transaction is declined. If it's not declined, the bank has a very expensive day rate foreign exchange fee as well. So international players really lose out in in all in all methods currently. So we set out to solve some of these issues by uh, sort of frankly just providing a more common, sorry, a more modern and, and user-friendly um, payment experience. Players get instant withdrawals back to their bank, which allows them to use that money immediately. Those casual players get that instant gratification they were chasing when they came in. You know, they get that high of leaving with more than they had. Um, and they also have the opportunity to come back and play straight away. Like we said, you know, Carly would actually be able to, to spin around just before the exit and, and have those couple of spins on the, on the roulette table. And she wouldn't have been able to do that if the money wasn't available. Um, the limits on bank transfer as standard are miles higher than they are on cards. Um, and you can also feel much more confident increasing your limits even further with bank transfer on a permanent basis, account to account, because fraud is so much more difficult with bank transfer. So you're a lot safer in that department. Um, and Trusty works really well for, for international players too. Um, essentially, as part of the flow that you saw where it, where it gave them a list of banks, there's a little drop down box at the top. So if a, if a player is in a different country, they simply select their home country where they bank, um, they select their bank and it would be as if they're doing a deposit um, in their hometown. You know, there's no crazy FX fees and, and there's no risk of that particular transaction being declined. But look, I'm, you know, I'm not making this up. Don't, don't 
sort of just take my word for it. We, um, in 2020, we, we did a huge amount of research into, into payment preferences and, and how various payment options affect player behavior. Uh, and two of the resounding results we saw were, were that 94% of, of European players want access to their winnings immediately. Um, that's a huge amount of people who don't want to wait for their winnings. And that's logical. But what a lot of people don't consider is that's a huge amount of people who will likely choose an operator that gives them instant access to their winnings over one that only has payment methods that force them to wait. Again, that's what we said, an increase in player loyalty and therefore lifetime value. And not only that, but 80% of, of European players said they would actually be likely to play more if they had access to instant withdrawals. So that means more deposits for the operator, more business for the operator. And again, those two key words, increasing loyalty and increasing lifetime value the, for the player. So obviously I, you know, I spoke about, I spoke about um, Carly doing a spin and, and coming back and playing those last couple of games of Brulea. I obviously said that in jest, but, but the reality is that is how players behave when they have access to their winnings immediately. Thanks, Sam. So what about if we dig down into the operational side of things? Where can operators find savings connected to digital payments? Again, um, good question. And this is often hidden. It's not one of those super obvious things that, that sort of strikes you in the face. So what we're what we're trying to achieve on a great scale with, with scan and play is, is trying to make trying to make operators become what we call more operationally efficient and we're doing that by automating those processes that we've gone through before kyc um, but we're also trying to make things more efficient from a cost perspective so we know looking at the bigger picture you know, the cash is expensive to handle this is probably no no, that's probably nothing new to anybody watching this webinar today. Cash is expensive. Um, we typically see that cash costs businesses between five and six percent to handle. Um, obviously, card acquiring is is far less than that, and I, and I can assure you that, that scan and play is far less as well. Probably much similar to card acquiring. Um, to, to sort of outline this a little, a little better, we. We typically view the cost of cash in two ways. And one of the ways we, we view it is, is fixed costs. We understand that the reality is that cash isn't going anywhere. It is, and for a long time will be, um, an essential payment method for land-based casinos. There's literally no getting around that. So casinos and arcades and other venues, are, they're always going to face those costs when it comes to cash. And those fixed costs are things like cash registers, safes, deposit boxes, um, those kind of things. But there's also a lot of variable costs with cash. And those variable costs are governed by how frequently and in what volume your casino is dealing with cash. So there are costs like cash pickups, which are obviously done less frequently if, if less cash was in circulation. Um, the emptying of slots, again, that's, that's done less frequently if there's less cash. Um, lost cash would be massively reduced if, if total cash in the casino was reduced. That's logical. Um, there needs to be less reconciliation of the cash, um, you know, less sending the cash to the bank or moving it from one place to another. And, and that's even, you know, without considering the security involved with, with doing each of those processes. Um, so already it's pretty obvious if you can lower the amount of cash circulating in your venue by digitalizing your payments infrastructure with 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 methods like scan and play or other cashless solutions um logically you're just you're going to save money straight off the bat because you're lowering those expensive variable costs um and like i said we're we're totally aware that cash is essential um by no means are we saying that we should strive to be completely cashless, at least, at least not anytime soon. Um, but in today's digital world, players should have alternative options available to make their lives more convenient and to increase your conversion. You know, businesses and operators have the opportunity to make more of an effort to embrace cashless, which can complement cash and, and obviously then improve the player experience lower their own costs and, and hopefully both of those things makes 
makes the operator more operationally efficient. So finally, you mentioned that operators can also improve efficiency by reducing demands on administrative teams. This is an interesting one because it's clearly a very effective tool in the sense that it helps teams to devote their time and energy elsewhere. So what would you say is the overall impact of this and what are the ways that it can be achieved? Yeah, so it's it's a lot of the a lot of the ways that we've just spoken. So I won't I won't drag through this too much. I'm conscious of everybody's time, but but the first way that we that we do that is just by addressing the core product um, of payments and, and simplifying deposits and withdrawals. Um, you know, like I mentioned, there's there's large amounts of withdrawals, typically ones over a certain size, that are that are processed by manual bank transfer. Um, and you can automate processes like that as much as you want. But anything where there's still a manual element involved, um, you can't escape error. Um, a cash attendant or a, a staff member in a withdrawal example, they have to take bank details from the player to submit the withdrawal order. Um, and even removing the, the significance of that from a, from a time perspective, uh, it carries a huge risk of being erroneous. Uh, you know, it's super easy to, to hear a number incorrectly or to type the wrong digit and putting a, putting a bank account number in. Um, and those erroneous payments, those erroneous processes, they cause a, cause a huge issue and take up lots of time for operators. Um, again, from a withdrawal perspective, you know, you also have the problems with, you know, withdrawals of certain sizes having to be signed off by head office. Um, you then have to reconcile those larger payments amongst, amongst the smaller ones. And, and all of that is time consuming and, and obviously then expensive. Um, but with Scan and Play, we're automating things. We're making this stuff infallible and, and not erroneous. Um, the player is able to receive those instant withdrawals back to their bank account. Like I said, there's there's no room for error. Um, the player's account is remembered from from their deposit from their deposit flow. Um, so we remove a huge amount of scenarios where human interaction is required, and as a result, we we make things more efficient. Um, but we also remove room for error. Um, and, and on top of that as well, Trustly does all of the reconciliation for you as well via our back office. So you save a huge amount of staff time and, and money in, in that respect as well. Um, there's, the overarching thing here is that we see there's a lot of archaic processes involved with the current payments in, in land-based gaming, um, especially around withdrawals. Um, and we feel like Scan and Play can help to simplify, speed up uh, and improve those processes for, for both operators and players by automating things uh, and taking human error and human time and human effort out of it so that your staff can focus on improving player experience in, in, in other ways. Um, but look, like I said, I won't. I won't recover everything that's that's on the screen there. A lot of it we've we've gone through, and like I said, conscious of everybody's time. So, if anybody wants to revisit anything, I think um, Eleanor mentioned that this is going to be on on the IGB's website. So you can go up and and you can circle back and and revisit anything that you want to. But hopefully, it's given people a little bit of insight into into what Scan and Play is about, how we developed it, what we envisage the product doing, and also how we envisage the the payments landscape within retail gaming changing and evolving over the next few years um, if anybody's got any questions feel free to send them across to, to cashless at trustly.com um, actually in true scan and play fashion you can you can scan the qr code on the screen there and it will prompt your your phone to send an email to us um, in whatever mailing app that you use um, even if it's got nothing to do with Trustly or Scan and Play or, or, or the option of using our product, we'd love to hear from, from operators um, their thoughts on, on payment landscape at the moment, especially post-COVID, especially where digital payments are becoming more and more popular. But we'd love to hear your thoughts on, on the current situation and, and how you feel that it might change over the next few years. Thanks for listening, guys. Well, that's all we have time for today. So thanks again, Sam, for joining us and sharing these insights around Trustly's digital payment solutions. And as Sam already mentioned, if you do have any questions, please do get in touch with him. 
Um, today's webinar has been recorded and will be available on demand shortly on iGamingBusiness.com, so please do stay tuned for that and keep an eye. And until then, we'll see you next time.